Hello and welcome back to another episode of Historical Churches here on SAR Histories where on the channel today we will be visiting St Wyston's Church, Repton in Derbyshire. The church that we see today was established in 600 AD and was traditionally founded by St David. There are many different styles of architecture to be seen, a telling sign of the church's repeated alterations through the ages. St Winston's consists of a sturdy west tower with angled buttresses and a slender spire, an aisled nave with a clear story and south porch, and a rectangular chancel raised up from the crypt. The church shows examples of all major styles of medieval building, except the Norman style of the 12th century. The earliest record of the church's namesake, St. Wyston, occurs in the Anglo-Saxon list of resting places of the saints, written some time before 1030. This record states that St. Wyston was buried in the monastery at Repton. Florence of Worcester, a Norman historian writing before 1118, tells that Wyston was the grandson of King Wiglaf and that he was murdered by Wiglaf's successor and was buried in the mausoleum of his grandfather. The later chronicles of Evesham Abbey record that King Canoe had St Wyston's bones move from Repton to Evesham Abbey where his shrine was said to have performed miracles. The same record says that a small part of the relic was returned to Repton in the 13th century. Also, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records that King Ethelbald of Mercia was buried at Repton after being murdered only 12 miles away. The church is open to the public and houses some unique features that are a privilege to see. Until 1935 there were six bells, when in that year two more were added and all eight were hung on ball bearings. The oldest of these bells dates from 1677. Inside is truly breathtaking and is a wonder to behold. It is quiet and offers a majestic place for prayer and reflection. In 1792, when alterations were made, little consideration was given to the monuments inside. Some were buried beneath the floor, others maltreated and moved. My favourite of the monuments is the alabaster figure of a knight which now rests near the north stairway to the crypt. Originally, this monument rested at the east end of the north aisle, but was moved outside in 1792. Then, in 1803, it was moved again down into the crypt. After repeated protests, the monument was moved for the last time in 1910 to the resting place present. It is believed to be the effigy of Sir Robert Francis of Formal, who settled in the district towards the end of the 14th century. Today, old graffiti can be seen etched into the stone, some dating from the 1600s, 
which makes this monument even more intriguing. Repton appears in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle again in 873 to 874 AD when it records that the invading Danish army wintered there, destroying the abbey and ruining the church which was later repaired and taken into use to serve the parish as it does to the present day. We must be therefore thankful to those that repaired the church after the Viking invasion, as for the splendour of St Wiseland's church not to exist is unconceivable and it is now our duty to preserve it for the future generations. The descent to the crypt is made by way of stairs that lead down from the north chapel into the northwest corner of the crypt. The crypt was constructed in the first half of the 8th century during the reign of King Ethelbald. Originally, the crypt was a baptisery and later converted into a mausoleum which became the final resting place of the Mercian kings. This crypt is one of the oldest and most important examples of Anglo-Saxon architecture to survive intact and is an absolute must-see for any historical enthusiast. It is about 16 square feet by 10 feet high, with 9 almost square bays. It was built in stone originally, about 2 metres below the ground and 1 metre above, with a roof possibly of wood. Arch windows open to the north, east and south. It is thought that stairs led through what is now the west recess. In these small recesses housed the bones of the Mercian kings and of St. Wyston himself. Repton became a place of pilgrimage and the uneven wear of the stone steps is a reminder of how popular Repton was. In later centuries the crypt disappeared as the stairs were floored over and the windows obscured by stables and sheds. The crypt lay forgotten until 1799 when a workman digging a grave broke through the vaulting of the southwest compartment and tumbled into it. The graveyard itself is a wonder and exciting to explore. It has many old graves differing in size and shape, making this one of the best that I have visited. It is well tended and easy to explore with pathways to guide you around. Most of the headstones date from the 1800s and are in a readable condition, though others have been left untended and are now overgrown, making them harder to read. Hidden amongst the other graves was this curious headstone which captured my attention as I have never seen one like it before. Its design is different from any other and intrigues your imagination. The wall graves are very well tended and are together towards the back of the graveyard. These headstones are set in a border with flowers that give life and colour to the area.
The RAF grave in the centre captures your attention and has an ornate prestige worthy for one that gave his life in service to his country. The style of headstones differ wildly, from simple weather-worn headstones leaning up against the outer walls to more prestigious ones which emphasise their wealth. It is a sorry sight to see some graves left to get overgrown, while others of the same time period are well kept and I believe that all should be equal in their treatment. It is also worth noting that in the 1980s a mass grave of human remains was found to the west of St Wyvern's. It is believed these remains are of the Great Danish Army, each showing signs of a violent end and buried with Viking artefacts. By the walls of the church you will find some noteworthy graves of old rectors, headmasters and of Charles Burgess Fry who was best remembered for his career as a cricketer. Some graves are hidden under trees with low branches or overgrown by bushes and brambles and can be difficult to explore. I came across this Freemason grave which captivated me as I had never seen one before and is one of my favourite graves I have seen to date. Outside the church gate is a monument to those that lost their lives in the First and Second World Wars. It is beautifully kept and is no less than what these brave men deserve. St Wyston's Church in Repton is a must visit church as it has a rich history that is still being uncovered. If you have enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe and I will see you all next time for more historical churches. Until then, goodbye.